All right, we're continuing here with factoring. We're going to talk about type um, of factoring with trinomials. So trinomials have three groups or three terms. So I've got a group here, I've got a group here, and a group here. So three pieces, that's where tri, like tricycle, is coming from. Now, what we want to do with the trinomials, we're going to play a little game. They get a little harder if there is a number in front of this x squared. But if there's not, we're just going to do a little bit of a puzzle. Let me see what they've got here. Yeah, let me explain all of this. Maybe I'll just do it myself. So what we want to do here is we want to look at this last number. I'm going to write 12 over here. Now, I'm looking for two numbers that would multiply together to get 12 and would add together to get 3. Okay, Two numbers that multiply to get 12 and add to get 3. Can you see that those two numbers would be 4 and 3? So if I were going to play this puzzle, I multiply those together, I get 12. I add them, I would get 7. Now I'll show you what to do with it here in a second. Let me show you. What they are doing here is they went through all of the possibilities. These are the factors of 12, all your choices, and they added them up to see which would work. Well, only one combination is correct. It's this final one. Now, they're going to get harder, and I've got another method for you when they get a little harder. But if you just have the, this standard kind with a 1 in front of here, it's like 1x squared, all you do to factor it is you give me an x in each one of these parentheses, and you give me those two magic numbers that multiply to get 12 and add to get 7. You know you're right because you foil these out, and you would get back to where you started. So just a quick refresher in case you don't remember. So if we were doing 36, 36 is made up of two numbers. Those are factors. This huge thing right here is a giant number, but it's not factored because it has pluses and minuses in between here. But what I've done here is exact x plus 3 times, this means times, x plus 4, they're factors. I've now found two numbers that multiply to get this, just like 6 times 6 make 36. So you know you're right because you could FOIL this out. You remember how to multiply those. And what someone did after doing many of these, when they were trying to work backwards, they, they thought about going forward, and they saw how the puzzle is always made. The last number is these two guys multiplied together. And the middle number keeps happening during the foiling process. So all we're doing is we're unwinding a foiling problem. OK, so pause the video if you want to try it on your own. We've only shown one, so be happy to just show you here. Now I'm going to go ahead. I've got the 1 on the front, so this one's easy. I'm going to just write my two x's. This is the factoring form I'm looking for. This up top is not factored. I'm going to start it. Now I'm going to write my 8 over here. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get 8 and add together to get 6. Well, I hope you see that one, I think. It's probably, do you see that it's 2 and 4? Sometimes people have a really hard time finding the solution to the puzzles, especially on harder ones. So don't give up. I'll show you a trick when we get to some more difficult ones. But so there we go. Those are the two, and I've got that factored. Try another one. Pause the video if you want to try on your own. Okay, I'm looking for two numbers that make 15 and add to get 8. Do you agree with that? And I'm factored. OK, what's different about this one? Um, nothing. <laughs> I don't see anything different about this one. OK, so the only thing that we've got a little bigger number. So I'm going to start here with my two u's. The letter change doesn't change anything. I'm looking at 24, two numbers that make 24 and add to get 11. Here's my choices. Same, this is not different at all. So I would get these two. OK, pause if you want to try one on your own. But this is just another straightforward. They haven't twisted anything yet. Two numbers to make 24 and add to get 10. That one's still pretty straightforward. Yeah, this, uh, this textbook does it pretty much just <laughs> straight. 
So they give a lot of examples. So we're going to keep going with it just in case you want to see them. Okay, so 24. Hmm. No, I don't see that. Sometimes it can't be done, but I don't know. So here, I'm going to show you the trick in case you can't find it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn 24 into all its pieces. So I'm going to do a tree. This is the prime factorization. 24 is made up of these numbers. Now, here's what happens. I've got my 24 over here. Some combination of these prime factors have to be the two numbers. So what I'm saying is you can group them in any way you want. And I could try that 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Well, that won't work because that would get 10 if I add them. So 6 and 4 is 10. So that's not it. So let me try another one. I'm going to try 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. And 3 is the other number. No, that's 11. Still doesn't work. I think I see where it's going now. 3 times 2 is 6 times 2 is 12. There it is. 12 and 2 are the two magic numbers. So 12, sorry the t's look like pluses. Okay, there we go. So there it was. I'm going to talk you through this trick one more time because this is really useful. I break, so 24 is the number that I'm looking for. I broke it down into its prime factorization. It has to be some arrangement of these prime factors. It has to be the two numbers. So I kept going through the combinations until I could find one that worked. These three factors and two, this creates 12, this creates two, and I've got it. Okay, another one, just hard one. I think the point of this is just that there look, there's a lot more combinations is what they're getting at. So 60 is gonna turn out to be five and 12 gets our 17. That was the one we were looking for. All right, now they're using the same 60. So if you want to look at this one, we've got the options back here. So we're looking for 19. Do you see how we're looking for six numbers of multiply to get 16 and to get 19. There's a lot of possibilities, but they're right here. This is the one, 4 and 15. So we're going to just x plus 4 x plus 15. Okay, we could go back to that same slide and try this. Pause it if you want to. I'm going to work this out with the combination way. Unless do I see it? Man, this one's not too bad to see because it's 60. It's going to be 20 and 3. Now remember, if you didn't get it, you could break 60 all the way down and start grouping your choices together until you found a combination. So, but this one, I, I saw this one pretty quickly. V plus 20 and V plus 3. Okay, now things change when you have a negative in the middle. And here's how. So, my number is 28. I need two numbers that multiply to get positive 28 and add to get negative 11. Well, do you see, this is going to have to be two negative numbers. The only way to multiply two negatives, the, the only way to get a positive with negatives is two negatives. So I don't see the combination on the, oh yeah, yeah. So it's seven and four, but they have to be negative numbers. Negative four and negative seven make positive 28. And if you add them, they make negative 11. So if this last term is a plus, it's gonna have two negative signs. Okay, pause it and try it on your own. So I'm going to give a minus and a minus here. Now, I need two numbers that multiply to get 18 and add to get 9. Here they are. My handwriting's terrible. 6 and a 3. Okay, now this one I'm a little worried about finding some good numbers here. Well, maybe not. No, it actually turns out to be pretty easy. I wasn't sure. So, I'm going to break this down. Two numbers make 63, but this is a plus and this is a minus, so I know they're both going to be negative numbers. It's going to be negative 9 and negative 7. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. 
Now, we have another version. This time we've got a negative on the end. Okay, so what are we going to do with a negative on the end? It's going to mean that I'm going to have to have numbers with opposite signs. Can you see that? So I've got a negative 5 over here. I'm going to need one number to be a positive and one number to be a negative. So I'm going to have 5 and negative 1. Did they work this for me? Yeah, they're going through the choices. Look how they picked positive 5 and negative 1. They multiply to get negative 5. They add to get positive 4. Okay, try this one if you want to. All right, what do we got here? Ne so I've got two different signs. Negative 12, it would be plus 6 and minus 2. So I've got opposite signs because of the negative 20. So plus 5, minus 4, that adds together to get plus 1. Okay. Yeah, they've done it just the other way around here. The only thing different on this one is that it's going to be the negative 5 and the plus 1 to add to get negative 4. Yeah, I don't think this is much of a variation. It's the same root idea. Always pause on these triads if you want to give it a shot yourself. But same concept. Agree with that. Negative 20, the, they add to get negative 1. So remember, this is really a 1 there. It's hiding there. And remember, if you ever weren't sure, we're just foiling. That's what we're doing. Factoring is just foiling backwards. OK. I don't know if there's anything tricky about this one. Same thing. Nothing new about this. Same thing. All right. Are we going to have trouble? No. I was looking to see if they're giving us some kind of variety here that something's going to twist it. But this is not. This is going to be, so we're looking for negative 40. We're adding to get minus 3. Those would be my two numbers. OK. Keep going here. It says oodles of examples. I hope that's helpful, but if they're there, I'm just going to go ahead and work them. Yeah, this is what I wanted to what was coming. Okay, we finally reached this point. I don't like to do this to students on the test. Many times students have a lot of trouble with, with just the factoring, but if you're pretty good at this, um, harder tests will throw it out there for you. So you could expect to see it. So if you can wrap your head around this, that'd be awesome. So if I were trying to factor the number 7, I can't do it. There are no two numbers other than 1 and 7, but this is a prime number, so it cannot be factored. That can happen with these trinomials, polynomials too. This one cannot be factored. And the reason it can't be factored is if you go through all of the possible choices, there's no way to multiply to get 15 and add to get negative 6. It can't be done. So this is, just like 7 is a prime number, this trinomial is a prime number. Okay, so I think the point here is that we could go through all the combinations of 18, and what we're going to find is that this can't be done. So, I don't know if I should show them. Okay, it's the only way to do it. So if we add these up, nothing here is going to add to get 4. So it can't be done. So I would say prime. Okay, I'm assuming the same thing is going to happen. Because I see the plus, I'm looking at two negatives. So I'd go through 12, all the ways, all the ways to make 12. Okay, and I would do two opposite, opposite signs. One could be a positive, one could be a negative, but there is still no way this is going to work. So this one is also prime. 
Okay, sometimes they'll do this to you. This is just out of order. You always want to go downhill. So this x squared is the biggest power, is what it's called. We want to just put him first. We want to rearrange it so that he's in the proper order, descending down the hill from the most x's to, to the least. After that, it's the same game. Make negative 48, add to get 2. I'm going to use theirs here to see that here's our choices. And that's how they created this. Two numbers to make negative 48, add to get 2. So we've got one out of order. That's all you got to do is fix it. I'm going to just start working these because there's been so many examples, but if you always stop me, if you get to a try it and you want to do it yourself, just pause. Do you notice this is going to have op so two negatives here because you got to make a positive 12, you add them up to get a negative. Okay, so there is more coming. There's going to be a second part on this where we're going to start tackling the harder ones, but that'll get you started with the basics.